All right, this lesson is chapter 2.1, Relations and Functions. What we're going to learn in this lesson is to graph relations and identify functions. We've got a lot of new words we're going to learn. Relation, domain, range, a mapping diagram function, the vertical line test, and the function notation. Okay, so... Suppose you use a motion detector to track an egg as it's dropped from 10 feet above the ground. The motion detector stores input values, or the time, which you see in red, and output values, the height. So at 0 seconds, it is at 10 feet. At 0.1 seconds, the egg is dropped to 9.8 feet, so on and so forth. At 0.2 seconds, it's at 9.4 feet. So a relation is the set of pairs of the input and the output values. So you can write the relation as a set of ordered pairs, as you see in this diagram. You can graph this relation on a coordinate plane. So let's just graph the relationship here. So we're going to graph the relationship negative 2 and 4. All right, it's always our x and y value. Remember, y goes to the sky. So we're going to graph negative 2, which is right there, and positive 4 right there so that value is negative 2 comma 4 the next one is 3 negative 2 so we're gonna go 3 to the right and down 2 so that is 3 negative 2 the next one is negative 1 0 so it's gonna be right here negative 1 0 and the last one is 1 5 1 so we go right, 1, up 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So there is 1, 5. So we have graphed the four relations. X, Y values. Okay, next example. Graph the relation. 4 is 0, 4. So again, this is our X, and Y goes to the sky, and X is first. So the first one, 0, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. We didn't move left or right. We just had to move up. The next one's negative 2, 3. So count left, 2, 1, 2, positive 3, 1, 2, 3. So there we go. That is negative 2, 3. The next one is negative 1, 3. So move left, 1, and up 3, 1, 2, 3. So there's negative 1, 3. Negative 2, 2. So left 2, up 2. So there's negative 2, 2. And then 1, negative 3. So move right 1, negative 3. 1, 2, 3. Down. And there's your 1, negative 3. Okay, simple enough. Remember, it's x, y. Okay, the domain of a relation is the set of all the inputs or all the x coordinates of the ordered pair. The range of a relation is the set of all the outputs or the y coordinates of the ordered pair. Sometimes you can find the domain and range just from its graph. So example two, let's kind of zoom in here and see if we can figure this out. Write an ordered pair for each relation shown in the graph and then find the domain and range. So the very first point is two comma four. We go right two up four. The next one is three comma, it looks like four and a half. Okay, the next one we go over four and up six, seven and a half. The next one we go five, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And the next one we go one, two, three, four, five, six to the right, and then five, and then six to the right again, and then seven and a half. So we've listed all the ordered pairs over here. 2 comma 4, 3 comma 4.5, 4 comma 7.5, 5 comma 7, 6 comma 5, and then 6 comma 7.5. So the domain is just all the x values. So 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. The range is all the y values. 4, 4.5, 4 7.5, 7, 5, and 7.5. And then we can put those in order from least to greatest for the domain and the range. So find the domain and range of the relation. Okay, first thing is, let's just find all the values. The very first one, this has an ordered pair of it looks like negative three comma two, 
The second one has an ordered pair of it looks like 0, 1. The next one we got to go right to and up 1, 2, 3, 4. So 2, 4. And the next one we got to go to the right 1, 2, 3, 4. And it looks like down 3, so negative 3. So my domain is just all the x values. So negative 3, 0, 2, and 4. So that's my domain. That's all my x values. Okay, my range, my y values for each ordered pair. So it'd be 2, and then 1, and then 4, and negative 3. So that'd be my range. And then we'd want to put them in numerical order. So the domain's negative 3, 0, 2, 4, and the range is 2, 4, 1, negative 3. So the answer is D. All right, another way to show a relation is to use a mapping diagram, which links elements of the domain with the corresponding elements of the range. So you write the elements of the domain in one region and the elements in the range in the other, and draw arrows to show how each element from the domain is paired with elements from the range. So make a mapping diagram. So make a mapping diagram for the relations negative 1, negative 2, 3, 6, negative 5, negative 10, 3, 2. So our domain values, our domain is nothing more than negative 1, 3, negative 5, and 3. So to map that, we just start with the, the least to greatest, so negative 5, negative 1, and 3. So that's our domain. Okay, our range value would be negative 2, 6, negative 10 and 2. So our range values, you just write those in order. Two, so it would be negative 10, negative 2, 2 and 6. Now you just got to order them up. So the first order pair was negative 1, negative 2, so negative 1 to negative 2. The next one's 3 to 6, 3 to 6. The next one was negative 5 to negative 10. The next one was 3 to 2. So there you go. Pretty simple. Next example, which mapping coordinates responds to the relation? Okay, well, let's just look at it. Well, let me set it up. Let's go get just our domain's values. Let's look at our domain. So I have 2, negative 1, 0, negative 1, negative 2. So our domain, if I did it this way, our least is negative 2, negative 1, 0, and 2. Okay, what's our range? Be 8, 5, 8, 3, and 3. So my range, my least is 3, then 5, then 8. So there's my, there's my mapping. Now we just got to do the points. So we go back, look at the screen. 2 goes to 8. Negative 1 goes to positive 5. 0 goes to 8. Negative 1 goes to 3. And negative 2 goes to 3. So there you go. So which one looks like this? It looks like the answer would be D. Okay, a function is a relation which each element of the domain is paired with exactly one element of the range. Okay, determine whether each relation is a function. Okay, looking at the domain. So it has to relate to only one element in the range. So that means I can only have one arrow coming out of each domain. So looking at this one, you see there's two arrows coming out of negative 2. So the element negative 2 of the domain is paired with both negative 1 and 3. So it is not a function. B, look at the domain. There's only one arrow coming out of each number of the domain. It does not matter where it goes on the range. Each element, each element of the domain is paired with one element on the range. So it is a function. Notice how each one of these has only one arrow coming out of it. That's a function. 
This one had two, so it is not a function. Okay, determine whether this is a function or not. Well, each one only has one arrow coming out of it, so yes, it's a function. As you saw earlier in the lesson, relations can be represented by discrete data points that may or may not follow a pattern. Relations can be also shown to be a two-dimensional figure, such as a line or curve. Graphing a relation on a coordinate plane gives you a visual way to tell whether it's a function or not. You can use what we call the vertical line test to determine whether a relation has at least one element of the domain paired with more than one element of the range. If a vertical line, if a vertical line passes through two or more points on the graph, then it is not a function. So looking at our vertical line test, right here you can easily tell our vertical line passes more than one point, so that's not a function. Look at here. You cannot find a spot on this one where the vertical line touches more than two points, so it is a function. Okay, vertical line test, very important to know. Okay, a function rule expresses an output value in terms of an input value. So, our output is y in this example. Our input happens to be 2x. Our output in this example is f of x. The input is x plus 5. The output in this example is c, or the circumference, and the input is pi times d, or d. When you read a function notation, f of x, it's written or read as f of x, or a function of x. Note that f of x does not mean f times x. When a value x is 3, f of 3 reads f of 3, and represents the value of the function at x equals 3. Okay, so we're going to have an input and a function for everything. Find the f of negative 3, the f of 0, and the f of 5 for x equals 3x minus 5. Okay, so the, the function of x equals 3x minus 5. So the function of negative 3 would equal 3 times negative 3 minus 5. Again, all we're doing is replacing the x with the value. Now we just follow orders of operation. That would be negative 9 minus 5, which would be negative 14. Okay, so there's the f of negative 3. So the f of negative 3 is 14. So the f of 0 would be 3 times 0 minus 5, which would be negative 5. So the f of 0 is negative 5. And now we got to find the f of 5. The f of 5, okay, the base or parent function is 3x minus 5. 3 times 5 is 15 minus 5, which would be 10. So the f of 5 is 10. So if you wanted to write the ordered pair here, you could write negative 3 comma negative 14, 0 comma negative 5, and then 5 comma 10. Alright, next example, 6b. Find the f of negative 3, the f of 0, and the f of 5 of f, the function of a, equals 3 over 4a minus 1. Now understand the variable it uses, it does not matter. It's the same type of equation. We're just plugging it in. So let's write the f of a equals 3 fourths a minus 1. So the first example is we're plugging in negative 3 for a. So it's going to be 3 fourths times negative 3 minus 1. So we're going to multiply, so it's going to be negative 9 fourths minus 1. How do we get 1 to have the same denominator? We just multiply it by 4 over 4. So it's going to be negative 9 over 4 minus 4 over 4, which would be negative 13 over 4. Okay, we can just leave that one as is. All right, the f of 0. This one will be a little bit easier. Okay, so the f of 0 is 3 fourths 
times our, our, our value, 0 minus 1. So the f of 0 is negative 1. Okay, let me go ahead and write negative 3 over here. Last one, f of 5. Do that in pretty green. The function of 5, the f of 5, is 3 over 4 times 5 minus 1. So the function of 5, the f of 5, is 3 times 5 is 15 over 4 minus 1. Just like we did in the first example, how do we get 1? to be a fraction with the denominator 4. We just multiply it by 4 over 4. So the f of 5 is going to be 15 over 4 minus 4 over 4. So the function of 5 is 11 over 4. We could rewrite the ordered pairs if we wanted to. Negative 3 is my x value. The output is negative 13 over 4. There's one ordered pair. The other ordered pair would be when my x value is 0 my a value is 0, the output is negative 1. And the last one would be is when my input value is 5, my output would be 11 over 4. Okay. Last example. Find the f of negative 3, the f of 0, and the f of 5 for this function, the f of y. Again, the variable it uses does not matter. So the function of y equals negative 1 over 5y plus 3 over 5. Well, the good thing is our denominator is already the same, so that should save some time. So let's plug in for the f of negative 3. It's going to equal negative 1 fifth times negative 3 plus 3 over 5. So negative 3 times negative 1 fifth would be 3 over 5 plus another 3 over 5, which would equal 6 over 5. So the f of negative 3 is 6 over 5. We can just leave it as a mixed fraction. That's fine. Okay, the f of 0. Hopefully you see the pattern here, so you could probably speed this one up. The f of 0 is negative 1 fifth times 0 plus 3 fifths. So the f of 0 is just 3 over 5. Okay, changing colors. I'm going to go to orange this time. The last one is the f of 5. The f of 5 equals negative 1 over 5 times 5 plus 3 over 5. Well, we're going to leave it in fraction form just to start off. Obviously, negative 1 over 5 times 5 is negative 1. But let's just go ahead and negative 5 over 5 plus 3 over 5. Do you see the reason I left the denominators the same, 5 over 5? So I could easily add it. So negative 5 over 5 plus 3 fifths, the denominator is the same. Negative 5 plus 3 would be negative 2. So the f of 5 is negative 2 over 5. And again, you could write all three ordered pairs. So you could say negative 3 comma 6 fifths. That's one pair. 0 and 3 fifths. That's a pair. And 5 negative 2 over 5 and that's a pair all right hopefully you were able to review this and uh, not have too much problems